You can see there's lots of confusion for me around this time, lots of questions. <laughs> now I'm asking, what's the difference between accepting, you know, accepting what is, and adjusting to it? Somehow I know in adjusting to it, there's, there's some, again, there's still the idea of sacrifice. Um, so that's my question. <coughs> what is the difference between accepting and adjusting? Answer. Adjusting to illusions has a feeling of surrender as sacrifice. You want things to be different, but will take them as they are because you feel you have no choice and prefer to be happy. Adjusting is different than acceptance because there is still a feeling of lack associated with the circumstance. With acceptance, there is no perceived lack. The circumstance is perceived as whole and complete as it is. So my question then became, how can I ensure that I am learning acceptance and not adjusting? Answer. If there is truly no preferred outcome in your mind, there is nothing to adjust to. If illusions have become meaningless to you, there is nothing to adjust to. You will not have to adjust to be happy unless you feel that things must be a certain way within form in order for you to be happy. So this is a pretty clear answer. <coughs> Whenever I'm seeking outside of myself for happiness, I'm going to be adjusting rather than accepting in order to be happy. But when I'm not seeking outside of myself anymore for happiness, that's when I'm into true acceptance. So the real question here is, where am I looking for my happiness? And that's how I'll know whether I'm adjusting or accepting. My next question was, there are many things in form that do seem important to me. Some seem critically important. How do I get from where I am to seeing everything in form as meaningless? Answer. Accept that your perspective now is not all there is and be willing to see anew. Accept that you are wrong and let go of all desire to be right. Don't make changes in form that you are not ready to make. But as you do things in form based on a perceived need, be willing to see that as a temporary perception rather than a fact. Be willing to be open to seeing anew. So again, it's a stepping stone thought that he's giving us, but it's a very, very helpful stepping stone. So if something is <coughs> very important to me, for example, um, you know, finding a romantic relationship, and I, I really feel I want to get married and have children. You know, this is a very common, a very common need, seeming need in the world. I really feel that I want to get married and have children, and so my happiness seems to be linked to this this outside thing. Holy Spirit is saying, "Okay, fine. So you think you need to get married and have children in order to be happy." Look at that as a temporary perception right now. Realize that you can move beyond it. Accept that is your perception now, but don't see it as a concrete fact. Don't see it as something that you absolutely, truly have to have or you'll never be happy. Just see it as the way you feel now and be open to the fact that someday you may not feel that way anymore. It's very gentle. He's just asking us to be open. Now we get down to what I wanted, which was not to get married and have children. <laughs> Let's get into the details here. What I wanted was to be alone. <laughs> the opposite of getting married and having children. I said personal space or the ability to retreat into personal space seems important. It seems important for happiness and it seems important for time with you. Yet, I also see this desire for personal space as a desire for separateness. Can you please help with this confusion? And very specifically what I was talking about, of course, was not living alone, living with someone else, in this case Jasmine, who wanted to be with me when I wanted to be alone. And again, I was feeling like a selfish bastard. <laughs> 
still still feeling like a selfish bastard here. <laughs> And, and so you know, this is what I feel like I need, personal space. But I have this little girl here who wants to spend time with me. Um, help me. Please help me with this. And so Holy Spirit says, content and intent exceed form. What is the purpose of your being apart? Are you being apart in form in order to join in spirit? Or are you being apart in form in order to keep yourself separate? And the truth is, and I'm sure you guys all know, because I'm sure you all go through this, sometimes it was one and sometimes it was another. Sometimes I was really just feeling guided to go and spend some time alone. Other times I really just wanted to get away. And, and what he's really saying is I need to look at, again, what's underneath. We're not talking about spending time alone. We're talking about motive. What's underneath why I want to go and spend time alone? Remember that what you teach you learn, and what you demonstrate, you teach. When you feel the desire to be apart, ask yourself what is the purpose of the apart time. If the purpose is joining, the seeming separateness in form is meaningless, as all form is meaningless. And of course, the purpose is joining when I'm truly feeling just to go and be alone with spirit. If I'm feeling to go and be alone with spirit in meditation <clears throat> or in studying A Course in Miracles, you know, but my real purpose is healing, that's the purpose of joining. So he's saying, even though I may physically be apart from someone, if my purpose is joining, my purpose is love, there really is no separateness there, you know, in my mind. So that's okay. You know, that's okay for me. I'm in harmony with myself. Let's put it that way. If the purpose is joining, the seeming separateness in form is meaningless as all form is meaningless. Mm. If the purpose is hatred, acknowledge your purpose and let it go. It is also meaningless because it is a purpose of illusion. A purpose within dreams may maintain dreams if it is long cherished, but a purpose released has not effects anywhere. You can change even the dream by changing your purpose. So again, he's teaching me to look at the motives rather than look at the form, look at the motives. And again, if my purpose is joining, if I really am just feeling guided into quiet time, you know, go. But if my purpose is hatred, if my purpose is wanting to get away, needing time alone from that, that hatred energy, he's actually recommending, you know, because of my purpose, that I notice that and then choose not to follow it. At that time, not to go into my room and, and close the door. But in that time, to choose to stay with Jasmine because otherwise I'm listening to the ego so he's teaching me to learn not to listen to the ego he's teaching me to learn to let that go uh, he, he, he says if I continue to cherish that thought of hatred I'm just going to continue dreaming and he knows that that isn't my purpose <coughs> <coughs> so <coughs> again it's all about you know what's underneath what's underneath always looking underneath and then remembering my purpose comparing what's underneath to my purpose if it's aligned with my purpose, do it. If it's not aligned with my purpose, let it go and don't do it. That way I am always aligned with my purpose. 